Medicine is not a profession. Medicine should be a vocation. It should be uh, a, a way to dedicate ourselves to the people, not to, not like any other profession, not in, in any other job. So if you do that, why not do this for those who are more in need? Lucille Teasdale was born in Montreal in 1929. Even as a child, she already knew what she wanted to do with her life. Nous, quand nous étions jeunes, nous n'avions pas de télévision, de jeux électroniques, alors on s'inventait des jeux, comme jouer à la mer. Elle, moi, je faisais la mer, que elle faisait le médecin. Déjà, elle euh, s'était conçue une petite trousse, et puis elle, faisait, elle aimait faire des pansements euh, au bébé qu'on avait, qui était joué par ma plus jeune sœur. Et puis, euh, elle, déjà, elle avait le goût de la médecine. Euh, Et quand nous sommes allés au pensionnat à 12 ans, qu'elle a rencontré des sœurs qui venaient de, de Chine, elle était impressionnée par ces religieuses qui voulaient aider les enfants. Elle s'est dit, moi, quand je serai grande, je vais faire la médecine et je vais aller à, en Inde. C'était sa première idée. Lucille not only wanted to be a doctor, she wanted to be a surgeon. That presented a challenge in 1950s Quebec, where there were very few women doctors and no women in surgery. It was during this difficult period that she met a young doctor from Italy who was already committed to working in Africa. His name was Piero Corti, and they were married in 1961. If you ask Piero, he will tell you that I, fall, I fell in love with Africa. And then, in a way, to stay in Africa, I decided to marry him. That is his interpretation, but it's not mine, you know. And uh, we decided that we both enjoy the, the, the place, the, the work we were doing, and then we, we decided that we were also fit one for the other, so we decided to get married. There was plenty of work to do. St. Mary's Lesore at Gulu was and is the only hospital in northern Uganda, and for many years, Dr. Teasdale Corti was the only surgeon. Instead of having three, four operations a day, sometimes she couldn't uh, avoid to have uh, five, six, seven, eight uh, operations a day there because in the morning, usually, she was not operating except for an emergency. And they knew that, and so unless uh, the, the pa there was a difficult patient and so on, she was quiet. And this for the first 15, 20 years. Civil war swept Uganda in the late 70s, and for the next decade, danger became a way of life at Gulu. It was while operating on one of Idi Amin's soldiers that Lucille contracted the wasting disease that would later become known as AIDS. It didn't stop her. Nothing could. Let's say that she was a, an animal for the hospital, you know, a, 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 a spirit more than an animal for, for a hospital. So much so that, uh, that uh, she never complained, she never said, ah, let's go home and sort of things like that. Never, 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 absolutely never. You know, this is the risk of the uh, profession. Uh, every, not every profession, but many professions are having their own risk and does not prevent people to go on doing their, their profession. So in, in uh, surgery, especially, but in also in medicine, there is a certain risk and uh, uh, we must uh, take this risk uh, if you want to do your job. So uh, I took the risk. By the time the disease forced her to stop working, Lucille and Piero had established a school of nursing that has turned out hundreds of health professionals. She was running a program for training surgical residents at Uganda's major university. And over the course of 35 years, Dr. Lucille Teasdale Corti had performed more than 13,000 operations at St. Mary's Le Sore. On a commencé là, on a fait comme ça jusqu'à 36 ans quand elle est morte. Disons, on en avons vécu. Moi, je ne veux pas dire sans jamais s'enlager, etc. Mais c'est vrai, absolument vrai. On ne sait presque jamais chaque année. Je ne sais pas qu ce qu'elle disait, elle, à ses sœurs, là, quand elle s'est dé, dé, dérobée un peu, là, et peut-être elle disait aussi quelque chose de mauvais. Mais à moi, elle n'a jamais dit quelque chose de mauvais. Lucille finally lost her battle with AIDS in 1996. But the legacy of her work remains. Under Piero's continued guidance, the hospital is thriving, and the love of the people she served is practically overwhelming. When she died and we brought the, her body to Gulu, to our hospital in a place where uh, uh, there is a, a Madonna and so on, under a tree, under a, 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 a grotto, no, they say, I don't know whether it is good, but I mean, 
uh, when she was brought there, it was a terrible moment for the rebels and so on. They were coming, shooting, killing, and uh, uh, she was staying there four days, and in those four days, thousands of women came with their children and talking uh, to the child, looking at the, they were bringing up the child, look, this is the daughter who has been saving you, you are going to die, and so on. Something incredible, right? But hundreds, hundreds every day and so on. The, the, the work she was doing, I understood from the fact that those mothers were ready to do anything provided it was Lucille that was treating her, their children. And she accepted the malady. For her, she didn't have any good amour to go to Africa. Au contraire, elle se sentait privilégiée d'être avec un homme qu'elle aimait, qui était à ce côté, qui avait les mêmes ambitions. Et euh, Lucille mérite certainement d'être là, euh, cette Canadienne qui euh, était en Afrique loin de son pays. Euh. She deserved, not because she was my wife, not because it's just question to go there and see her the, the book the, of the surgery. Let's talk only the surgery. But Lucille was a good doctor. She liked to do the things well. That is the difference, uh, certain difference that uh, not all the doctors understand. Not all the doctors understand. When she, there is this passion of fighting the disease and so on, and, and this is the same.